Hello, my dear gardeners. It's time for the garden weekend walk again. And you know what you were telling me? That you, in your gardens, you have already Japanese beetles arriving. Somebody who gardens in Maryland was telling me that. And I was thinking to myself, oh gosh, I think Japanese beetles forgot about Connecticut and they will never show up. Well, guess what? They did show up. Mm. But you know what? Japanese beetles are not as big as my garden as those brown Asiatic garden beetles. Plus, there are several... But you know, no, between black spot and Japanese beetles, I probably will choose Japanese beetles infestation because it's not as big in my garden. There are several new introductions in the side of the garden and exciting blooms are happening. My hydrangeas are blooming despite all the predictions that they will not bloom. So let's come and see the front. But first I want to give you a, a quick tour of what's happening on the porch. I introduced quite a few um, uh, pots this year and I think I slightly overdid it because it's getting more and more crowded. Look at this. I keep pushing all these pots further away from each other because look, look at the size of the seed. They're going to blossom very soon, maybe in a week or two. And uh, the palette of blooms on my back porch will be again changed and my sedum autumn joy attracts a lot of pollinators a lot of bugs are all over look at this beautiful blossom lady of charlotte created this nice long stem and just rested herself right here oh actually it's a nice combination of this light green color a nice soft texture and Lady of Charlotte right here. Okay, welcomed blooms, you know. Lady of Charlotte, I am surprised this year with my roses. And let me know what you think, what your experience this year was. Because with me, Lady of Charlotte's blooms were not as huge and not the blooming season was not as long. So I was thinking, hmm, what's going on? And now I see that Lady of Charlotte is creating so many new buds again. And it's, Lady of Charlotte is not waiting for another uh, three, two, three weeks. New buds are coming in with gusto. So, hmm, it's going to be interesting, you know? But I would be interested to know what your uh, rose growing season was. One more thing I want to show you before we start the tour of our back porch. Look at this. This, hydra this hydrangea what was, look, look at this little bloom. Oh, and it's a pink one. And the pink color is trouble for my roses, you know, here. I'm not sure what hydrangea it is. I have to check and if I find out, I will put it on the, ca on the screen. But you know what, usually the hydrangea story with hydrangea color is, if hydrangea grows in acidic soil, the blooms would be blue. If hydrangea grows in the sweet soil, the alkaline soil, the blooms would be uh, pink. Okay, mosquitoes loving me. So, but some hydrangeas are keeping their color no matter what, the pink ones. So I'm not sure, no, you know what? When this hydrangea was given to me as a gift, one of those, you know, plastic uh, uh, container hydrangeas from the supermarkets where they are not supposed to survive, this hydrangea was, uh, was blue. And now I see pink color coming up. So it means my soil here is changing into, it's moving towards alkalinity at the back. And it's not a good sign for roses because roses do love soil on a little bit of acidic side. So test, soil test I have to do and then probably correct the acidity of the soil. All right, but this hydrangea is growing and maybe in several years it will build a nice canopy here. And this would be, you know, together with little baby boxwood, this would be a little nice little corner here. So I'm very glad that this hydrangea is blooming here. Now let's come and look at my porch here. Last week, I sprayed my uh, petunias. Actually, they used to be petunias. Now they belong to the class of Calibra Choa. So look at these guys. I sprayed them because they had white flies and they were doing a little bit uh, miserable. 
white flies are gone and look how nicely petunia responded well calibrachoa responded right michelangelo is coming into its bloom power and blooms are still small this is my first time uh, growing this type of calendula and I saw it in the New York Botanical Garden in their herb uh, section and uh, well three four weeks ago and calendula was already almost uh, setting seeds so my calendula is a little bit delayed here but still once it's blooming and all the uh, flowers will open really wide it's going to be a lovely thing here I generally like the cheerful uh, yellow color of blooms. Lovely. All right, my salvia. And uh, I want you to look at the leaves of salvia. You see these kind of teared apart, damage to the leaves. Usually this damage is done by Asiatic garden brown beetles. And the way to spot them is to come outside of the, into the garden at night with your flashlight and see what's flying around your plants. Because sometimes people are saying, oh, something is eating. Just recently, just yesterday, one rosarian contacted me. Something is eating my roses and there is no uh, pest on the plant. Well, if you have that situation, go outside into the garden at night with a flashlight with your phone and see what's flying around i bet you you will see brown beetles flying look at this these are the well some of them are japanese their beetles but the brown ones are the asiatic garden beetles they feed at night so you won't see it during the day and they burrow themselves comfortably near the beautiful host plant they like particularly and at night they come out again so they honestly at this point i'm just coming at night and i'm just hunting them down because this is this like tiered effect on leaves is happening for the last what two nights so those beetles got into the soapy water last night and the best host which they love let's look, go look at the back is my rose one particular one rose and the damage they did is horrendous just look at this rose this is perfume rose uh, Cordes rose and look at the damage for the last two days unbelievable look at this some leaves do not exist at all so you know what i did yesterday i sprayed this um, bush since it's so targeted by beetles i sprayed it with neem oil at night because neem oil makes uh, the surface of the leaves a little bit not tasty for beetles so Hopefully they're not going to eat it. I'm going to monitor this plant very well. And at 11 o'clock at night, I'm going to be here hunting these guys out. And they're not touching my uh, new dawn rose. Isn't that interesting? New dawn is climbing, okay? New dawn should be here. I'm going to fix my new dawn for it to climb. All right, so the battle with beetles, right? And look at this also eaten oh, and i see no i don't see a beetle what misery you know but you know what this uh, rose which was replanted and look at the inside of the rose you almost can see that this is a damage from sucking beetles you see they're sucking juice from the rose and this browning of the rose is usually symbolizes that beetles were here oh well what can you do so my Bosco Bell Rose, a beautiful, charming thing, was suffering in the front of my garden for many years. Finally, I replanted it here and my little rose is thriving here, looks like. She decided to create little blooms. Her first blooms of the season were eaten by who knows whom, maybe deer. But I suspect deer wouldn't be able to come into my back garden. But whatever, somebody ate it, maybe rabbits. And then look, look at this, second blooms beautiful so this is a little story here i want to show you look at this guy here 
the cucumber and he looks like he's a cuki in telling me holding with one hand to the stick and he's saying which way should I go to the left or to the right oh and he's already created a little cucumber right there well there's nowhere to go he's going to be just stuck here busy creating cucumbers all right my vegetable bed is looking eaten as it should be my lettuce is almost done uh, rhubarb plant hmm i can't say that my rhubarb plant is adjusting very well it's having a hard time adjusting i have a feeling that it was pot bound and rhubarb plant has a very strong root system which wants to go down almost like a top root system and uh, i suspect that you see this yellowing of edges i already lost two leaves so this one looks like it's on its way out so i'm really staying on top of hydration here because i want this plant to adjust well hopefully he will be doing fine here oh well what's happening here well this is my adorable creeping time and creeping time is very obedient look where i step the time doesn't go and um, it really doesn't blossom a lot here because it has um, shady conditions morning shady conditions here you see the garden time is full of blooms although it has somewhat straggly growing habit what can you do all right you know i like how this room is here it's very smallish but very cozy space here and i'm sure you know already by now that this is the afternoon sun here and morning shade and now during the summer days when summer is getting into its um, uh, middle season july almost middle of july right everything is getting um, I wouldn't say aged but into its middle time and um, the appreciation of shade and moisture in the garden is bigger for me at this time so sitting here in the morning when everything is watered or especially after the rain is great because you have this cool moisture here cool shade and sun is beaming on all the garden and you're just sitting there appreciating those quiet morning hours uh, filled with somewhat cool conditions all right let's go to the front of the garden and oh first of all let's go to the side and let's see what's new there are three new additions to the side shade garden my blue beard is growing well it was attacked at the beginning but by some sort of sap suckers suckers uh, they left and uh, Bluebeard is growing. I must say it is sensitive to drought. It's just freshly replanted. And if I don't water it every single day, I mean every single day, it will put his, its leaves down. So um, I should stay on top of watering of this guy. Okay. Every day I walk among my plants and I really don't see how big they become. But the other day I was making uh, um, obelisk for the front of the house. Oh my gosh, a tack of... And I was going through the video where I started the project and I saw that how small the plants were in the garden just what, one month ago or several weeks ago. So you probably are noticing all the difference. Look at this guy. Oh, these beautiful, charming, quiet blooms here. And she's bigger than ever. And that color is so dramatic. So three new additions. Look at this, what we have here. We have fairy tale romance, Burgania. And uh, I ordered it online from Etsy store. I must say that these three plants arrived very healthy. I ordered three different burgundias. Uh, this one is 
Miss Piggy from Proven Winners and it blossoms very well in spring. So I, for now, I planted them right here because they like nice, cool, deep soil conditions. But you know what? I am thinking that I might try to overwinter them eventually in pots outside because the temperature hardiness zone is from four to nine. And four, for me, zone six, seven is pretty good at surviving in the winter in the pot outside. But for now, I planted them out here and this one is a winter glut. Mm, what a name. Who comes up with such names, you know? Winter glut, oh my gosh, whatever. It's beautiful reddish, whitish color. So I'm looking forward to see these blooms next spring, next season. And look, right there. When I walk through the garden, the picture is right there. You see those beautiful lilies, come and see. Oh, by the way, somebody asked me a question. Uh, what are these beautiful big hostas? And I mean, this is one plant. It is Empress Wu. I bought two of them. And this one is doing much better than that. Uh, look at the size of these leaves. So it's Empress Wu and it can go, oh my gosh, more than one foot in diameter. Big, big plants. They need a lot of space. All right. Uh, lilies, look at them. Strong looking flowers. Look what a great color they are. Hmm, ants inside. And the blooming season is long and nice. They get a lot of sun here, these beautiful lilies, because they are having... Why is the blooming season is long? Because they have a lot of flower uh flowers here so you see this stalk had one two and then it has one two three four five six seven more to come and what i like about lilies they they clean their flowers quick so they fall down quickly and uh, the plant has a nice and neat appearance beautiful you know hey we have a lot of tomatoes there wonderful we're going to have a nice salad for the dinner which is very lovely. And unfortunately, this season of hydrangeas must come to the end. And I see this green color symbolizing that hydrangeas are going to go into deeper and deeper green, and then eventually they will be turning gray. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut these hydrangeas here. You see all this power, flower power here? So layers from the ground, I will cut and bring into the house and they dry so well, these hydrangeas. In case you missed my previous video, look at this. This is a new addition to the front garden. And this is macrame rose support for my uh, Eden rose, a baby rose there. And here's the link how I did it. It took me some time uh, to finish this project. I was a little bit insecure in the middle of it, but then once I saw how wonderful it looked against the green foliage of my um, blue spruce, I got excited and I finished that project in one day. So um, come here and see what's happening here in the porch. My you, somebody mentioned it, I am trying to create a ball here. Eventually, if, of a very good size and what I did at the beginning I believe two years ago I let one of the stems just like this grow tall didn't cut it trimmed my U and uh, next year that little stem created shoots new shoots I trimmed they I kept trimming them so this build up what you see here which is not really in the shape of a ball yet it's two years old, this buildup, just for you to imagine how quickly it takes, well, how long it takes to create a topiary. So what I did, you see this pole here? It's a plastic one. I inserted it into the bush and I buried it into the ground because I don't want wind to bend this very, I mean, come here, come close to my cameraman. I don't want to break the stem and look how thick the stem is already becoming two years you see what the difference between this 
and this is just a, a little stem so in two years this is what happened so when this stem become a little bit thicker eventually i will take my green plastic pole off and hopefully i will have a u here and then a ball here something like this and then the eden rose uh, climbing around giving us beautiful blooms <laughs> beautiful thing right so that's one ball here here is another ball i didn't trim this u yet but this is another ball here so eventually they will be echoing each other here in the front i think it's going to look good um, it will be interesting it will be entertaining it would be exciting for the eye to see that shape so that's a plan with this thing now I never thought that my hydrangeas, my mop head hydrangeas in the front are going to bloom, but they did this year. Let's go and check them out. Well, this year hydrangeas suffered. We have mop head hydrangeas here in our front uh, uh, strip of land here. And look, this hydrangeas this year is not going to bloom because what happens with mop head hydrangeas in our zone 6-7 if we have a late severe frost which we did hydrangeas blooms hydrangea buds which hydrangea sets the year before are all frozen and all black but look at this this middle hydrangea for whatever reason her blooms are saved and she's blooming with beautiful blue blooms you see these are just coming from their green uh, color into blue deep blue but here you can see how gorgeous these blooms are this is just the beginning of blooming season and some seasons i had one year which i captured this hydrangeas they literally were covered with blooms and i have a video so here it is just for you to see how beautiful these hydrangeas can be if we have mild winters and no late frosts unfortunately not this year so this hydrangea no blooms from her just nice foliage and here we have some blooms not on tops because these buds froze in late frost and my uh, smooth hydrangea is slowly coming in it's quiet time you see all the blooms are becoming faded green and soon all the blooms are going to change into this grayish green color what can you do eventually we'll give it a nice haircut and it would be another foliage plant here the last thing i want to show you is the side of the garden where my uh, uh, roll down roses are growing they are fed and they are not producing new growth so i really have to be patient with those roses let's come and see what's happening there It is a slight um, wild west here. Uh, look at these Shasta daisies. I thought I got rid of Shasta daisies because they were too big, too tall here. And out of nowhere, they came up. I probably missed one clump. And look at them. They are here shading my uh, rose, which is Desdemona rose. So this is Roll Dahl. No new growth a lot of black spot unfortunately is already starting and since i'm not using any uh, pesticides on my roses i'm trying to grow organically <sighs> i have to come in defoliate whatever is uh, weakened maybe use neem oil but it's getting a little bit too warm we have 85 to die temperature so maybe in one of those cooler days i might use neem oil so this is it. My uh, generous garden is quiet here. Oh, it's going to have several blooms here still, which is lovely, you know. When roses are not blooming, some blooms here and there are well appreciated. Well, have a lovely weekend and we will see you in the next video. Happy garden adventures.